Hello friends, this video on air and water pollution part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about air pollution. In fact, in this lesson, our focus is to talk about air pollution and water pollution extensively. So first we will take up air pollution. So what is air pollution? In very simple terms, contamination of air with harmful substances. So when the air gets mixed up with the undesirable substances or unwanted substances, then we say that the air is polluted. So what could these harmful substances be? So these harmful substances can be some harmful gases. Now how do we know a particular gas is useful or harmful? If that gas is poisonous for the survival of living organisms, then that is harmful. But let me give you an example. Let us suppose carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, if present in normal amount, if present in the right amount, it is useful for living organisms. You take example of plants. Plants need carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis. But if carbon dioxide is present in excess amount, then it becomes harmful because carbon dioxide also contribute to greenhouse effect and greenhouse effect is harmful for the environment. So that means it depends uh, which gas is harmful to what extent. Now these harmful substances can also be some poisonous particles, some small tiny particles which if by any chance they enter inside our body, they can cause serious illness. They, they could also be some biological molecules, for example, you, you would have seen that there, there are many molecules because of whose presence people often suffer from allergy. Right? For example, pollens or dust. So all these things often cause allergies in people. So all these kind of unwanted substances can cause air pollution. Now, before we talk about air pollution, that, okay, how air pollution happens and how it can be controlled, we should first know what is air. I mean, we often talk about air, but what is air made up of? So because air also contains gases. So how do we know which gas should be present in the air and which gas is the extra thing that is present in the air. So for that we should know the composition of air. So air is a mixture of several gases. So some of the gases which make up air are nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, methane and small amount of some other gases. Now approximately, so this is just an approximate number, nitrogen com com consists of 78% of air. So 78% of air is made up of nitrogen. So it is mostly nitrogen. Approximately 21% is oxygen. So nitrogen and oxygen taken together constitutes 99% of the air. So we can say that air is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. And the remaining 1% is made up of all these gases. And out of these 1%, this 1% argon is present in maximum amount. So argon is present around 0.9%. So these are all approximate percentages. Carbon dioxide is present in very small amounts, 0.03%. And the remaining gases are present in very, very small amount. So this is roughly the composition of air. So here in this picture you can see how I mean, these boxes denote, the cubes will denote you which gas is present in what amount in air. So you see nitrogen is a huge quantity, next is oxygen, next is argon and then carbon dioxide and then a small dot denotes rest of the gases which would include methane. So that is the normal composition of air if the air is not polluted. But when the air gets polluted, there are many other chemicals, many other substances, many other gases which are also present in the air. So they might react with each of these gases and that's how the percentage of each of these gases might alter. Correct? So that's how the chemical composition or the chemical balance of the air might get disturbed. So what is the importance of air? Why do we bother about air pollution? Okay, let the air get polluted. I mean, why it matters to us? It matters to us because air is very, very important to us. Now how air is important to us? Let us see that. So air is like a blanket. Now before I talk about the points here which I have noted down, before that let me tell you what, what do you do when you feel cold during winters? 
you wear your woolens, you wear sweaters, you wear jackets, you cover yourself with a blanket. So in a very similar way, air also acts as a blanket surrounding the earth. So air is like a protective covering for the earth. So air is important for the survival of plants because plants need various gases for the basic activities. For example, plants survive because they are able to prepare their own food they are able to generate energy out of the food which they prepare now for preparing their food how do they prepare their food by photosynthesis for photosynthesis they need carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is present in air again if they want to generate energy so how do they generate energy by respiration for the process of respiration they need oxygen so gases again not only that even for their growth and development they need various nutrients and they get these nutrients from the soil now, one of the major nutrient is again nitrogen so nitrogen again is another gas which is present in the air so if you see without any of these a plant cannot survive so air is extremely important for the survival of plants survival of animals animals also do you think that we will be able to survive without breathing and what happens when we breathe when we breathe we are actually taking in air through our nostrils or sometimes through our mouth so the air is taken in wherein we try to breathe in oxygen and that is called the process of respiration so human beings take in oxygen for breakdown of food to release energy inside each and every cell of our body the food is broken down to release energy now earth is the only planet which is able to sustain life and why is that possible that is because of the presence of air because living organisms need air for their survival control the earth's temperature now for the survival of living organisms we also need an appropriate temperature if the temperature is too cold or if the temperature is too high life will not be able to survive now had there been no atmosphere in that case earth would have been too cold or it would have had a very fluctuating temperature so it, it actually acts as a blanket which knows how much of heat is needed inside the earth so that it is able to maintain the appropriate temperature suitable for the survival of living organisms protection against harmful radiation there are many harmful radiation also coming from sun or from other uh, objects in the outer space for example x-rays cosmic rays ultraviolet radiation so it, this layer of airs they also protect by absorbing those radiation or reflecting them back they do not allow those harmful radiation to enter inside the earth so these are some of the uh, reasons because of which air is extremely important to us now when we know that we cannot survive without air because both plants as well as animals so in fact all living organisms take in air in some way or the other so now just imagine if the air is mixed up with harmful substances which can even kill a living organism then what will happen if polluted air gets inside the body of living organisms they will start dying so a day will come when all the living organisms will die so that is why air pollution is a, a very significant threat and that is why we want to talk about it, we want to discuss about it, we want to know how to control it. So let us quickly look at some of the harmful effects of air pollution. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.